out of our state for our commitment to public education and to our kids. And uh, I, think, I think the congressman just doesn't get it. I don't think he understands. I don't think he has spent the time that it takes to fully comprehend all that has happened in terms of um, the, the uh, problems associated with past practices in Ohio. I don't think he understands the elements of the evidence-based model. Uh, otherwise, he would not be saying what he's saying. So that's why we're here this morning, and uh, we are open. Went in the classroom and saw their kid there. What would they see that the evidence-based model has put in there? Give us some examples that people can see and touch. Well, there are. The evidence shows certain things about how to educate, and among those, for example, would be the number of teachers, uh, teacher-student ratios, um, the, uh, the, the the curriculums that's offered. Um, uh, the kinds of supports, student supports and teacher supports um, that are needed. Um, and these are all very specific elements and components of the evidence-based model. <coughs> and so those are the kinds of things the evidence-based model is designed to do to make sure that we have uh, proper teaching <coughs> staff and that those teachers have proper supports and proper tools needed to provide a quality education. And so if you look at the evidence-based model as we've, as we've adopted it, it's rather specific. <coughs> and and uh, most of the elements of that model have to do with what's going on in the classroom. Well, the whole purpose of the model is to actually cost out what it costs to educate kids in this state. And it's- All kids. All kids, and, and regardless of where they live. And, and the, um, the, the cost of that is how much it costs to educate them in the classroom. So when the congressman talks about, uh, I want to put more money in the classroom, well then he should embrace the evidence-based model because that's what we do. We put money in the classroom. And frankly, the state has never done this before. So I understand how the congressman may, may be confused about it. Uh, but you know, the state has never stood up and tried to figure out how much it costs to educate kids in the state. And frankly, the, the numbers that we arrived at um, are right in line with the other costing out studies that have been done over the years. Everything from you know 98 on uh, has basically said we need you know uh, about the same amount of money that we're talking about here. So this is not anything unusual. This is not out of the ordinary. This is what we've known for a long time. But frankly, uh, uh, the Republican Party in this state has ignored it, and they've um, they cowered from it, and they're cowering from it again. They think it should be up to all of us. It should be. Um, you know, I, I look at my, a district that I represent, which is Mogador. They raise $90,000 on a mill. Just a few miles north is Hudson. They raise a million dollars on a mill. Hudson votes itself a 40 mill levy to raise $40 million. To raise that kind of money in Mogador will cost them 400 mills. Now, that is inequity. That's what we're trying to get at. Now, the evidence-based model provides $1.4 million more dollars for Mogador over the next 10 years, which is approximately 14 mills in Mogador. House Bill 400, which was, adopt, which was uh, put out by House, Dem House Republicans and uh, frankly is sponsored by all of their leadership team and two-thirds of their caucus, is basically the embodiment of uh, John Kasich's uh, risky tax scheme that he's always talking about. Um, that would cut $753,000 to Mogador, which is about seven and a half mils that they would have to come up with just to stay even. That's the inequity we're talking about here. So, you know, I don't think there's anything more important than this discussion. And frankly, um, the, I, the, the problem of school funding <coughs> is a 44 magnum problem, and they're coming up with 22 caliber solutions. The equity question is, is uh, a great question, but the, the, the model is not fully funded at this point. Maybe that's what it means by unfunded mandate. Well, yes, but it's not unfunded. Stop. None of the mandates are imposed until the state provides the money. These are not unfunded mandates. We have not been mandated to do anything that hasn't been funded. So when I read that comment in the paper this morning, you know, my first response was, how can they be unfunded mandates when we haven't been mandated to do any of these things yet? Yeah. They're and, not unfunded mandates. And when, and when you see, and when you see that um, an evidence-based model comes in and actually tries to cost out what education should cost in the, in the state, and we find out that we're short, 
Is that an indictment of the costing out model, or is that an indictment of the old model that was three that was shortchanging uh, students by two to three billion dollars? And this is nothing unusual. I mean, this is this is what all the costing out studies. The one that was done in two thousand most recently was probably I think two thousand and seven by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation said we need somewhere in the two to four billion dollar range. This is not out of the uh, this is not out of the mainstream. This is what has been said about Ohio for you know 15 years. And unfortunately, the other parties ignored it, and we have it. Governor, the uh, uh, Department of Ed. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You I've just address. wondered, Governor. And as, they will get to you. I'm sorry. As Mr. Dyer said, this is being phased in, and I think you said, when will citizens and taxpayers and parents notice the fruits of the seventh in space model if it takes nine or ten years to phase the funding in? That seems to be part of the discussion. Well, we. Uh, we expect the first evidence will be the uh, uh, all-day kindergarten. That's that's the first step we're taking uh, in the in the phase in, um, and we try to be very sensitive to the concerns of, of local districts. We we uh, postpone that um, to give them a time to uh, to make the necessary uh, uh, adjustments to do the adequate planning and preparation for that. We, we understand that what we're proposing here is significant. Uh, it's a sea change, and it's something that uh, needs to be implemented uh, carefully, thoughtfully, and appropriately. Um, but we are committed to this. This is a fundamental change in the structure of how schools are funded. And that's why we believe we have achieved a constitutional structure. Now, the resources will be made available as the program is implemented. And, um, and uh, I, I, you act like you wanted to say something else to that. Uh, I always want to say something. This guy knows, <laughs> knows more about the technical aspects of, of education funding in Ohio probably than any other person, certainly in the legislature. And, uh, and so, uh, what was the question again, Bill, about the? Well, when will parents uh, start numbers. seeing this? Well, There's a lot of. Well, within within House Bill One, there were several components that were phased in, and they were given um, given dates to be phased in. For example, by year five, we should have uh, the phase down of the uh, charge up from 23 to 20 mills. So by year five, there should be three additional mills uh, that the state would be picking up uh, that wouldn't have to be raised locally. Uh, by year five, we should be at the 15 to 1 student-teacher ratio, which would drive significant dollars to the uh, lower grades and should uh, take care of uh, all-day kindergarten. If you can imagine, the old, form the old formula has only gave um, half the money for kindergarten. They counted kindergarten kids as half a kid. Uh, we're counting them as a full kid, and we're going to fund them at a 15 to 1 student-teacher ratio. Um, so several of these elements are at, in the in the uh, in-house bill one are going to be phased in, and by year five there should be significant new state resources available, and there should be significantly less need for uh, uh, for local property tax levies, um, unless of course we go back on those uh, promises uh, that have never been made before, and we um, and we we certainly don't intend on doing. That. I'm sorry. That's all right. The uh, Department of Ed produced a preliminary budget based on the EBM and it called for like 4% increases a year. And it was going to be like $900 million more dollars over two years than what to spend in two years. Um, are you committed to that level of increase to continue your phase in despite all the other budget challenges? We we, we are committed to, to phasing in this model. Um, we are committed to assuming obligations or mandates that schools face beyond uh, the 20 mil uh, <coughs> level uh, of, of, um, of local commitment. Um, and um, absolutely, we are committed to this plan. Now, um, uh, we also understand that, um, that we need to be <coughs> careful and thoughtful and deliberative in the way we implement this, that's why that's why um, we've been willing to work with with superintendents and and local leadership to try to make sure that we are a partner with them in making this plan um, uh, a positive uh, experience for them and something that is achievable. But absolutely, we're committed to this. Uh, I've um, you know I've staked my. Uh, 
uh, my uh, governorship on this. You all know that. Uh, and uh, But I didn't do it because, um, you know, it was an easy thing to accomplish. This is tough. But the future of our state depends upon whether or not we're willing to commit ourselves to our kids and, and give them a, a place of priority in the decisions that are made regarding how we use our resources. How do you find a billion extra dollars in next year's budget for education when we've got the spending four to eight billion dollar deficit? You just said absolutely we're going to find a billion dollars. I said absolutely we're committed to phasing this in. Uh, and and uh, what, what the Department of Education came up with was, was their estimate as to what it would cost um, if we were to do it now. And um, uh, we cannot spend money we don't have. Okay, uh, I think we all understand that. But is there a commitment uh, to these kids and these schools and this model? Absolutely. Uh, and, and that's what we are. And we have a school funding advisory council that the governor put in place. Can you go to the um, mic? Uh, the School Funding Advisory Council, as I look around the room, I see some people here standing in this room who are part of that School Funding Advisory Council, and I'm sure they'd be glad to speak with any of you. But that's a key component of this because they are looking at budget allocations as well as resource allocations and comparing spending. And they are looking at that across the entire state. It's a bipartisan group of individuals from across the level of, of areas such as higher ed and uh, superintendents and educational service centers and legislature. And those people are looking at how we fund these initiatives and what it's going to cost and how we're going to go about this. And you know, I, I know I know everyone's talking about the four to billion, four to eight billion dollar hole uh, that may be in next year's budget. Um, just if if you guys go to the Kaiser Foundation Family Family Foundation website and you look at Medicaid spending per capita, and you look at the different categories of Medicaid spending, if we were spending per capita on Medicaid, what we on uh, elderly and disabled uh, population, what Florida does per capita, we'd save three billion a year. That's the cost of the model. If we commit a little over one percent of the budget additional to education over the next ten years, that funds the model. If we spend a little bit less over the next ten years on the ninety-five percent of kids who are in uh, traditional schools, as Republicans spent over the last ten years, and the five percent of kids who are in uh, charter schools, we be we fund the model. This is not unusual. This is not an outside, you know, this is not a pipe dream. This has been done before. It's been done over the last 10 years. And so, uh, you know, I, uh, um, you know, I think, I think a little perspective is helpful. 